So in this video, we're going to walk through how to set up a connect project. And we will also discuss how to use that project as a template for future projects. We're going to begin by going to connect.trimble.com. If you bookmark this site, that's basically the entry point to Trimble Connect. You can then click sign in and using your TID, you will be prompted to sign in to your Trimble Connect account. If you bookmark this webconnect.trimble.com slash projects, then you'll be able to go back to this site and get into your projects after you log in. Now on the projects page, you can see that I have a handful of projects already created. You can look at them in a uh, tile view or a list view. And if you click the 3D, it'll actually open it up in the 3D model or in the 3D viewer. We're not going to click that. So if you do click it, just make sure you click it to turn it off. You can see here that I have projects. If I click on the tile, it'll actually open up and take me into an existing project. If I click back to all projects, it takes me back to my main page. So to create a new project, we're going to click new. Pretty simple and we're going to give it a name and I'm going to call this demo project. And here you can upload a thumbnail. So if you had an image of your site, maybe a logo, you could upload it here. The server location will be depending on where you're at in the world. Um, in North America, we're going to pick North America. That's going to be the server. You want to pick the server closest to where your, uh, you know, area of the world you're located. And then therefore it'll be a lot quicker when you're accessing your data. There's some more options down below where you can click and add a description, a little bit more detail of the project. You can pick a start date as well as an end date if you have a particular date of the project's duration. Again, those are optional. I'm gonna click submit. And it's gonna take me to this demo project. Now here, you can see you can drag and drop into this folder or you can click on create. So we can create a new folder. We can do a download um, sync synchronizing from our project desktop. And there's also a way to set up a map workspace or even do a SketchUp model. At this stage, you know, we're not gonna go into these particular topics at the moment, but here you can also click on add and these are gonna give you the same options. Or, and you can upload files. We're going to start by creating a new folder. So what you might want to do is have some type of folder structure. So this would be your folder directory. So maybe you have a folder for CAD drawings. We're going to create that. And then maybe we have another folder. We're just going to click on add. We're going to create a new folder. And maybe this is survey data. And we might have another one that is our, gonna be our GIS data, called GIS data files. And then maybe you have another one that is going to be your deliverables. So these are where we're gonna export files or maybe it's your export folder, but I'm gonna call it deliverables. So these would be your folders where you're gonna store, you know, models or other data, right? So it's a directory structure. Over on the left, you have views. This is if you have views, you can go to those. Again, I'm not gonna go into each of these. We'll talk about these later on in other videos. Um, you know, describe what releases are. You can see here's the activity. So, you know, shows who created what. So it's kind of a paper trail of who did what in the project. You got some uh, BCF, to BCF topics here. Again, we're not going, we don't have any yet. You've got to-dos, we'll talk, we'll talk about those. Those are like tasks and you assign them to certain members. So before you can really do all that, you have to have a team. So you're gonna to go to the team, which would probably be next, and you would simply invite people to your project. So if I click on this, you can invite people by email, you can choose their role, they can be a user or an admin, and then you would click on invite and invite them. The other uh, section you've got property set libraries again we'll talk about those but the other one is the settings so this is the one you probably want to make sure you have set up 
under project details, you can really define a location. So if your project is, let's say in here, you can draw a boundary. So I can just left click, left click, and draw this box around my project area. Double left click when you're done, and then you can click Save Changes. If you scroll down a little further you, and you didn't set a start date, you can add that here. You can add machine control attributes. So if you were working um, with Work, if you're connected to a Works OS project, you can pick that project from this list, your, your customer first, and then your project ID. We'll talk about that a little bit later. The other one that's important here on the project setup is probably your units. So under units, you can see the default is coming up as metric. In this case, I'm gonna set that to US survey feet. You can define the lengths, the units, and the display precision as well. You could add some other tags, kind of helps define tags used by project members. So uh, you can set up a tag and an action. Um, then there's also permissions, and this just controls what uh, members are allowed to do, allowed members to invite new project members or only administrators can do that. So you'll set those controls here. Under sync, this is what happens when you upload files or sync files, because what Trimble Connect will do, it can actually sync with your desktop, and I'm going to show you that in another video, as well as you know synchronizing and sending data uh, out to uh, field devices as well. But when you're doing that, there's a lot of files that you know AutoCAD creates, Revit creates, SketchUp, all these backup files, and you want basically what you're doing here is you're telling the sync to exclude those files in folders when it's doing the sync. So you're not syncing these backup files you know, or the non-essential files that these programs you're working in get uh, will create. So that's pretty much setting up a project. Now, once you have a project set up, you can see here I've got this template project here. If I click on that, you can see I already have a set of bunch of folders. My settings are already set. So the next time, what you can do, or the next time you want to create a new project, if you leave this as a project template and don't put any data in it, you can just click on this ellipse button here and say use this template for a new project. So if I click on this, I can choose what information I want. So if I want the folder structure in the project settings, maybe we're gonna have different members um, in groups, or I'm gonna have the same members. So if I click project members, then the same members will be part of this particular project. If I click next, it's gonna ask me for a name. I'm just gonna call this demo two from template. And this will become that new project. So when I click submit and uh, click OK, it's basically making a copy of this and you'll get an email and you'll, it'll show up in here and that will be my demo too, but it will take on the same settings as my project template that I set up. We're not going to wait for that here, but it'll come back here. If I just refresh, maybe it'll show up. Um, basically, again, it's going to take a few minutes to copy because it's got a migrate all that data over. So that's how you create a new project. Um, future videos below this, we'll get into a little bit deeper dive. Um, let me show you how to synchronize files from multiple applications. There'll be a lot more that we're going to cover within this particular guide.